Hello, today I'm going to be talking to you about how weights and biases can help teams better collaborate in the machine learning development lifecycle. Machine learning development is as much a coordination problem between different personas as it is a technical challenge. So first, let's talk about the model development lifecycle and all the personas involved. First, we have model training, where an ML engineer will take a model off the shelf and train it according to their needs. This requires that they track their metrics and results, version their model checkpoints and data sets, as they continue to iterate as quickly as possible on different modeling approaches to see what works the best. After training a model, the ML engineer then needs to evaluate it to ensure that it's going to perform well in production. Weights and biases provide several tools to help the ML practitioner keep track of their work, such as experiment tracking for visualizing their metrics and charts, artifacts for versioning their model checkpoints and data sets, tables for recording predictions from the model, and sweeps for hyperparameter optimization. Behind the scenes, there is another persona, the MLOps engineer, who is helping the ML engineer work quicker and efficiently. They help scale the infrastructure that the ML engineer uses to train and evaluate the models, along with provisioning environments for them to operate in, building tooling, model management, and taking the models that ML engineers produce and deploying them into production. Weights and biases can serve as the key handoff point between these two teams where when an ML engineer produces a model, they can store it in the weights and biases model registry, and then the ML ops engineer can take it and deploy it to production. In addition, weights and biases launch enables ML ops engineers to configure complex infrastructure like Kubernetes clusters and make them much more accessible to the ML engineer to, to launch experiments into. After evaluating a model, a team then needs to document this whole process so that in the future it can be clearly understood what exact version of a data set a model was trained on and all the metrics associated with that model. Managers and project stakeholders will be interested in this documentation. They will be concerned with model approvals, user management, and stakeholder alignment of the end product, which incorporates this machine learning model. And Weights and Biases provides reports, which allow all these personas to capture this whole development lifecycle into a living document that can be handed off to different stakeholders. And finally, we take this model and deploy it into production, which will mainly be the job of the MLOps engineer. All told, this process can take anywhere from eight to 12 weeks, just for a 10 person team. So anything that we can do to reduce this cycle can save a lot of time and money. So let's jump into weights and biases. Before I do that, I wanna show exactly how this works. Weights and biases is a very low effort integration into your existing pipelines. All you have to do is add a couple lines of code to your existing training scripts or evaluation scripts in order to log metrics and also to log artifacts like your model checkpoints. Once you do that, all of that information will appear on the dashboard where the different personas mentioned before can understand results, debug model performance, build reports, and facilitate model CI CD. Weights and Biases has hundreds of integrations with various popular libraries in the ML ecosystem like PyTorch Lightning, Hugging Face, and many others. So let's jump into a demo of how this ML lifecycle happens in Weights and Biases. Let's say you are a new machine learning engineer on a team and your manager has tasked you with training the core computer vision model on the most recent data set, building a report, and staging the model for production. As a new team member, you'll want to understand the context of this project. Here in this project workspace, you can see all past experiments that have been recorded over time, along with their training metrics and evaluation metrics, along with performance charts, 
and even individual model predictions on rich media so you can understand the model's predictions at a more granular level. To inspect an individual experiment, we can click on it and see the charts and metrics associated with it. On top of these metrics, weights and biases records information about the entire execution context of this experiment, such as who created it, when it was created, the operating system, Python version, hardware information. We'll even track system utilization like CPU and GPU memory usage the Python library requirements that you had installed at the time an experiment was executed. And we'll track code state like the git commit hash, the training script, or notebook that was used to run the experiment. Weights and biases keep track of everything you would need to replicate this experiment exactly. So how can we reuse this and retrain our model on the most recent data set? Weights and biases launch provides a clean way for turning past experiments into re-executable jobs that can be ported to various different environments. I click on the jobs tab, we can see all jobs we have at our disposal. The nature model training job is the one I'm looking for. This is the retraining job the team uses for the core computer vision model. Here I can see all past instantiations of this job as people have retrained the model over time. Going to job details, we can learn a little bit more about how to use it. We have this run config, which we can tweak to change the behavior of the job, like the data set it was trained on or other hyperparameters. The MLOps engineering team has provisioned a Kubernetes cluster where we can go ahead and launch this job into. Furthermore, the job is gonna produce some model artifact checkpoints. This will become important later on where we, where we will want to take one of these checkpoints and stage it for production in the model registry. So let's go ahead and start this process. Clicking launch, I can configure the job with the data set and hyperparameters I, I see fit. I can then choose the Kubernetes cluster I want to launch it into, and then go ahead and launch it. This is gonna launch this containerized job into the Kubernetes cluster and here shortly, we'll start to see metrics populate in the dashboard. While we wait for that, we can check out the artifacts tab. This is where the model artifacts checkpoints will land once the job completes. Artifacts is your one-stop shop for managing any serialized data as part of your pipelines, whether those are model checkpoints or data sets or evaluation results. The job that we launch is going to generate six checkpoints. Here we see the best one has already been labeled with an alias. An alias uniquely identifies a model checkpoint. Here we see and start to see the checkpoints start to come in as that model starts to train on that Kubernetes cluster. For a given checkpoint, you can inspect everything about it from the experiment which produced it to metadata, to the specific files within that checkpoint. Weights and biases, artifacts is agnostic to the structure or format of files you decide to log as an artifact. When you generate a checkpoint, you, you can then decide whether you want to register that checkpoint in the model registry. Usually in the course of training, you generate several different checkpoints, but the best one is the one you care about moving to production. So let's go ahead and register that model into the model registry. Here I can choose which registered model I want to link it under. And then I can give it an alias like staging to indicate that while this model performs well, it needs to go through further testing before it gets deployed. Linking a model to the registry is akin to bookmarking it, surfacing it to our teammates who may be concerned with consuming it like the MLOps engineering team. Flipping to the model registry, we can see all of the model tasks that my team is currently working on. I'm mainly concerned with the nature classification task, but the model registry is that central landing page for all registered models across your organization. 
For this core computer vision model, I can see all past versions that have ever been linked. And clicking on a specific one, I can easily understand the experiment which generated it. It's metadata along with lineage as well. So all upstream and downstream runs which concern this specific model. We see here, for instance, that a, model, that a downstream run is consuming this model and running unit tests on it. I can also click to view more details about the registered model, like viewing the model card, which describes the model at a high level, along with how to consume it and how it was created. The model registry is also a point where you can configure model CICD. Here we have two automations attached to this registered model, which allow weights and biases to talk to other systems such as GitHub Actions, which facilitate model testing and deployment. Going to these two automations, I can see I have two configured. One, when a new model is added to this registered model, this kicks off a GitHub action that runs unit tests on the model and builds an evaluation report. The second one occurs when a production alias is added to the registered model that will trigger a GitHub action that containerizes the model artifact and deploys it to GCP. Both of these automations are simple webhooks which ping GitHub actions to run the relevant workload. If I go to GitHub Actions here, we can see the testing and reporting action workflow is already occurring because I linked that new model checkpoint. Clicking into it, we can see that it's logging into weights and biases, pulling down the artifacts and running unit tests, and generating a comparison report. Weights and biases reports are a powerful way to surface all the results around model training and evaluation. Reports can be programmatically generated as they were in that GitHub action workflow I just described and templatized so you can facilitate standardized model CICD. Here we have a report auto-generated which compares the staging and production versions of the core computer vision model that we just retrained. In this report, we have embedded the model registry, so we can click into specific versions of the model that we might care about, along with specific training and evaluation metrics for the staging and production models in particular. So I can understand and inspect individual predictions from these two models. From here, I can also kick off deployment of the model by simply adding the production alias to the staging model. This will again trigger GitHub Actions to containerize the model and deploy it to GCP through a webhook repository dispatch. So let's go ahead and do that. I can go to the staging model and here add the alias production. Note that this production alias is purple, meaning that it's protected. So only model registry admins can make this change. This prevents uh, random editing of the model registry and affecting important production models. Coming at, back to GitHub Actions, we can see that the build and deploy GitHub Action has been kicked off. It's retrieving the artifact from weights and biases, building a container and deploying it to Kubernetes. So as an overview, we started as a new team member, trained a core computer vision model on the latest data set, staged the model for production, which automatically unit tested the model, generated a report, allowed us to inspect results, pass it off to our manager, who then could approve and deploy the model to production.